disaster. I've been filming too many things for too many videos trying to sort of create a buffer of videos again because I went through all those videos in March slash end of February when life was a bit more chaotic and now I think I'm done filming for the next couple days. I've got a lot of editing to do but I think I'm done with filming so this is just going to be like a tidy up. If you've got questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah. I am pretty open about what paints I've got in my palette. So if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. And we're going to get into this. So, I also have the magnet sheets out because what has really annoyed me the past two days are the number of my pans that are not magnetized. So, we're fixing that and sticking magnets on everything. Everything that does not currently have a magnet is getting a magnet because I cannot deal anymore. Stuff, stuff is getting magnets. We're done playing this like no magnets game. I'm done with it. First up though is going through these two trays and picking out all of the little Holbein pans. So you can clearly see there have been a lot of different videos going on. Where is your home? And I, you know, just dumped some stuff this afternoon. I kicked a tray again because it was sitting next to my desk. And so stuff has gotten all messy again. There's a beam paint stone. There's a mini, but a different mini. There's a beam paint stone. There's a beam paint stone. There's a beam paint stone. I think there should be one more beam paint stone somewhere. Oh, these are just, oh, oh. Yeah, that tracks. It's been really humid and these are honey based and so now I've got a mess. I have a mess on top of everything else. That's what I'm gonna need. All right, so we are going to clean as we go and put things away because anything that's honey-based has stuck. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Honestly, I should have known that was gonna happen with how humid it is. It doesn't really happen a whole lot here but when it is super humid, paints can melt. And apparently it's humid enough we have reached that point. Okay. Let's 
start with Holbein. This goes here. there. Your Viridian. You go there. You go there. And we've got Gamboge Nova. You go here. You go here. You go here. Can I do this all? You go here. You go here, you go here, you go here, Go here, you go here, and you aren't part of this set. So you're gonna stick on top. Next we have paint stones. They just get set in. It's pretty simple. They just go in here. Oh, I have room for two more. All right. Let's fish out. White Knight's granulation. There's one. There's one. This absolute sticky mess. There's one. There's one. In the video, I talk about the fact that their tube and pan formulation are different. I would say this proves that to be true. The fact that the pans are basically liquid with the humidity today and the pans, well, sort of sticky, are still solid. Um, I would say any that are stuck to each other, it isn't that pan's fault. It's probably the fault of something it's touching. All right, I think, I think that's all of them. So let us grab a baby wipe. Because I've got blue on me, and there's blue on these pans. Let's just wipe 
everything down. So I'm not gonna magnetize these because I don't think they'll fit in the tray if I magnetize them. They already just barely fit and I don't wanna make them not fit. I like them fitting in their set. Um, that being said, the pans are basically, or the tubes that were poured into pans are basically liquid, which is a little frustrating. Uh, especially as compared to how humid it's, it's raining, but it is like up until it started raining, it wasn't super humid. It's going to get way more humid here um, over the next couple weeks. And so that does concern me a little bit for the state of my palette. Like this one was soft enough that another pan dented it up top, but not so soft that it made a mess everywhere. Whereas lots of other stuff did make a mess. Like this got like hematite on it. Okay, you're okay. You are not okay. There's always gonna be something I find that goes liquidy in a palette and it just happens to be these white nights from tubes that have decided to be problematic this palette put together. That's fine. It's got a little bit, but really not bad compared to some of them. It's got a little bit. All right. I did not label this swatch sheet because I can be a bit silly sometimes. So let's see how many of these I can put away just from figuring out what's already in here. That goes there. This goes here. Green shadows. That was what I'd say. Green mist goes here. Cobalt chromium would go here. This would go here. Oh, which is darker, blue mist or aquamarine mist? Where are these swatch sheets? I thought I could do the swatch list. I cannot. Um, you'll get a sneak peek of DIY versus mixed. DIY mixed, DIY mixed. So I would say that up top is blue. And down here is aquamarine, followed by dark blue shadows, which is spot number four. What comes before that, though? Um, Cobalt is here. Blue Shadows is here. Which means that's Sky Blue Shadows. This is Lilac Mist. This is Gray Rose, <sighs> Hematite, Rose, Actually, that one's 
Three rows. Five of shadows. Scarlet. Ruby. So I am actually going to leave these open just because of how humid it is and the fact that they're honey based. I don't want them to grow anything. I think it's unlikely that they will. I've never had White Knights paints go moldy. I've had other brands of paint go moldy, but not White Knights. Um, and then we have the Studio palette, which I think is going to be an absolute mess based off of how sticky just those couple pans of paint are. So let's get into this. Yeah, I think it's going to be an absolute disaster. All right. Our sticky mess, our tray, I fit three trays on here, I might be able to, um, and then our tower, oh, there you go, so you can't totally see all of them, but good enough. So. Spring Rays is up first. It's been the first yellow in this palette for forever. And I think it will always be the first yellow. It is a lot of tidying um, and it's humid enough <laughs> that a couple of the honey based paints have melted and it's a bit of a mess. So it's more tidying than I thought it was going to be. Uh, volcano Yellow. Butter, nickel, butter, winter noon, lemon yellow, deep. Schminke, urban yellow. Did I just not see urban yellow? I thought I just saw urban yellow. Yeah, like stuff's, stuff's popping out of pans, stuff's having a time, which means I'm having a time. Urban yellow. Oh, I wish my sheet automatically scrolled. These two, oh, the M gram is basically liquid and it's stuck to the paint beside it. Luckily, they get to stay side by side. What about these? These do not get to stay side by side because the new Daniel Smith yellow, which I have set somewhere. <laughs> oh, I literally just had it. How have I already lost this yellow? There it is. There's our line. And then we've got permanent yellow azo. Those would be cadmium yellow hue. Whatever you are. Artistic Isle Indian Yellow. I used yesterday. You are here. Does that finish off this row? It does. Which has our last five or six yellows. Azo. These two. This. New Gamboge. Windsor Orange. Right. Then we have greens, starting with spring. 
Normally I'd go through and name all these colors as I go. Honestly, I am too tired. Warm green. Oh, uh, what has blue on it still? Oh, this palette that I'm grabbing into. I'm going, why, why do I have blue all over my hand again? hate when it's humid enough for pants to, paints to melt. It's so annoying. Daniel Smith Phalo. Yellow green. Holbein. Gluconite. Oh yeah, we're well, more onto all these green earths. Antica. Toad. I think moss is after. Nope. White Knight's green earth. Desert yellow. Desert yellow, desert yellow, desert yellow. Oh, but that's a dry blob. I don't care about that. It's not gonna make a mess of anything. Moss. Which means next is green fog. I think pickle. Yep, pickle. All different PG-23s. All lovely in their own way. I don't think that goes there though. Um, it doesn't. Oh, it does. That is light jungle green. <laughs> For me, it looks wrong. Bogland, Spring, Green Earth, Shrinky Green Earth, Cosmic Green Earth, P, Roman Small, Autumn Green. Lucas, Olive. Olive, Olive, Olive. Oh, the weird yellow I can never pronounce is not this it's this which does not look like a yellow it looks like a green and then white knight's olive it's a crazy color and then we have Roman small olive green light. Aquarius green. Is it going to be in here? It is. Not covered in paint though. So that's a win. Cosmic. Duty yellow spring. Tiger's eye genuine. I go back and forth on liking this color. Shire Olive. I believe it's you. It is you. You don't have any blue on you. Permanent Sap Green. A little bit sticky, but nothing like some of the other colors. I'm sort of surprised that the Jackson's Thalo blue didn't cause an absolute mess. Cause it is so sticky. That being said, I don't actually see it yet. And so it might be an absolute mess. <laughs> I just haven't seen it being a mess. Windsor Newton Sap Green. Oh, I was going to put magnets on stuff. Yeah, I'm over that. I'll do it when I'm not, you know, tidying pans. Um, tidying stuff up seems more important. So next we have Rosie Gallery Sap Green. Oh, 
Apple Blind Sap, Core Sap, Tiny Blues of Quarter Pen, Guppy, Artistic Isle Sap, Blooms number two, Forest Olive. Let's put this down for now, mostly because I'm tired of holding it. Grass Haze, not in this palette. Leaf is in this palette. Pistachio is here. Undersea green. I fear is going to be an absolute mess. I fear is going to be in the tray of absolute mess. Why don't I see? There it is. Sorry about flicking the palette. Um, apparently if I to turn on noise cancellation, you actually can't hear me, or that's been the complaint about the live this morning. So I don't have active noise cancellation turned on, so <laughs> having to deal with all the background noise of the studio. Um, but I'm just, it's taking a little bit to figure out all the settings on this mic. And unless I actually film and post with it, I don't actually get feedback on how it is. Aquarius green. It's a gray. I think that tray's just blues, actually. Um, Aquarius green. Dawn fog. On fog, then perylene green, then jade green. Where's jade green? Oh, there it is. And then we have something comes after jade green. It's not in this palette. Desert green. Oh, this is a color I don't like. It's a weird little pan because I don't actually like this color. There we go. I just never figure out how to use desert green. Well, on top of deciding to fall out of your pan, you are now covered in um, a different paint. So that's fun. some water in the bottom of you and sort of melt you back into your home. Tis the joy of test batches of paint is that they're not always the prettiest. The paints are excellent. They're not always the prettiest and sometimes they go on adventures. Black, green, that's cobalt gray. Black, green. Cutie. All right. 
We're doing pretty well so far. Ah, that's where you go. You go there. You're my little spacer. Machu Picchu is probably the first color in the Addison and Sedwigs that I'd get rid of. Definitely in swatching at this last series, I noticed that there are some colors that I'd probably get rid of from my palette. But it feels weird to break up sets. Um, so I have de-stashed. I've posted some stuff for sale um, over on Facebook and on Instagram. But there are definitely some other things that I'm thinking about getting rid of if I decide to break up sets. Grass green, Windsor green yellow shade. Huh. That shouldn't. That shouldn't be happening. So what am I missing? Oh, there we go. Where does forest go? No, forest green goes here. Okay, why do I have an extra space in that row? It's not where apothecary goes. The apothecary goes here. Got an extra space. I shouldn't have an extra space. Where's urban green? Is urban green what I'm missing? Edit, find. Yep, urban green's what I'm missing. And so it goes here. There we go. I knew I knew there was something. I was looking at it going, I know where the cobalt green goes. Cobalt, thalocene. And then viridian hue. Because, you know, it's just how the palette works itself out uh, right now. So, thalocene. Oh, nope, apothecary. Viridian hue is holbein. Then Daniel Smith Viridian. Then Heavy Emerald. Cobalt Green Pure. Cobalt Green Pale. Lucas Oxide of Chrome. Herman Smalls Chromium Green Oxide. Cosmic Creations Avocado. Forest green. Deep pine, Amazonite genuine, and Russian green. 
which I think they changed the name of at some point, but my pan still says Russian green because I didn't go back through and change my pan's name. Spruce, where's Hosta? Not that Hosta. Pulitzer, you're not what I want. Hosta, Hosta, Hosta. I just saw you. You're Jadeite. There's Hosta. Then we have Jadeite and Dragon. And these two. Next row we have Quetzal, which has gone on an adventure with pure pigments. We have Viridian Azul. Thalo Green Deep. I just saw you. There we are. Eerie from Blooms. Co oh, not Cosmic 31. Then we have Evergreen. Stormy Seas, Bog Cascade Pine, Lisbon, Fibonite, Pulitzer. Cobalt, teal, blue, ocean breeze, and swell. Sky. Blue brown is no longer in my palette because I've pulled it out. Sky should be breeze, and this should be verdigris. It is. So I'm adding two colors, but I pulled out three colors. So I actually pulled out more colors than I'm adding back in. Uh, da, 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 da. Is that you? It is you. Aqua Rose. She's gonna trip me up because stuff's gonna have moved in a different way than normal. Cobalt Turquoise. River Tears. Turquoise Blue Spinel and Ocean Deep. Nope, Bay Breeze. Ocean Deep is 31 Purple Fish. Then we have someone's paints next. I think it's Da Vinci next. I wanna say it's Da Vinci. It is Da Vinci. It is Cobalt Turquoise. Hosta. Hosta, hosta, hosta. I just used this in a piece. You are not hosta. Oh, 
Oh, Oh, host is the one that looks way darker than it is. You look at it and you go, you're a dark green, and it's not. It's like a turquoise, and a light turquoise is that. Andes is another one that you'll hear why I'd probably get rid of it in an upcoming video. Hermorosa Beach. Daniel Smith, Thalo Blue. White Knight, Thalo Blue. Michael Wilcox, Thalo Blue. Is the Schmincke one next? Did Schmincke, Thalo Blue. White Knight's Azure Blue. Just saw this color. It's here. It's not sticky, so it gets to go in. Jasper Stardust, Cobalt Turquoise, White Knights, Cobalt Turquoise. Oh, Cobalt Chrome Turquoise. Uh, Roman Smalls, Ocean Breeze, Nibs, Rain. Um, I don't think. Yeah, there's no amount of finagling that will get a full pan to fit there. So we will put in a space filler and put this tray down. And where are we at? We are on, we are 41 minutes into this. Yeah, that tracks. It's not a short process to put all this away. And I try and keep it tidy, but we still seem to end up doing this like once a month. <laughs> Just because like I use it a bunch and stuff moves around and then like stuff needs to be tidied up again. Um, so Mayan Blue, Cosmic Blue Sky, Da Vinci Thalo Blue, Cosmic Thalo Blue, M. Graham Thalo Blue. I really desperately wanted to like Thalo Blue. I tried so many different ones. Prussian Blue, Cosmic Creations Midnight. This is Midnight. Then Sapphire. And then, uh, what's next? These two followed by storm break, which should be this. And then we have aqua green. Uh, it's sky blue. Sky blue shadows is the one that's made this whole mess. No, it's maybe it's not. Nope, I think it is. Where are you, sky blue shadows? Yeah. You can see the lime green on it. Like, it's just an absolute mess, and it has made an absolute mess. It is so liquidy. Like, it just, like poured out of its own pan. It's so humid. And I don't know why only some of the colors are doing it. Also, it's been in a pan for like a year and a half. Uh, I would appreciate slightly less drama from it. <laughs> but whatever. Sky blue shadows. Uh, Silversmith. I saw it. Does it have, it does not have a whole bunch of paint on it. Lovely. Blue Appetite Genuine. Is that Vivanite Blue, Hydrangea, and Mayan Blue Dark. Haze Indigo. And lightning. Uh, 
Next row is gray blue, gray blue mist, which is also not a mess. Why, why just that one color? <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Um, it's a process. Well, you know, you've, you've been around since the beginning of building this palette. Actually, you're the reason most of this palette exists. So thank you. Um, but it's definitely, it got a bit out of control the past couple days with filming so many things. And I was looking at it a couple hours ago and going, I, I need everything to be back in its home so that I can just sit down and paint again. So everything is going back where it belongs, but there are definitely some things that are melting with the humidity and are going to find a home in the dehydrator for a few hours and just become a bit happier because it's a bit too much. I can deal I can deal with some level of stickiness, but like we're we're reaching my limit here when I can't pick up a pan because, you know, it's melted to another pan. So hopefully stuff will like dry out in the next couple days and we'll be back to normal. Because otherwise this is gonna get really annoying really fast. But what is up next? I accidentally refreshed, so I'm having to scroll all the way back down to blues. Um, I think we're about to start real blues though. I think we're about to head into the good stuff. Not that the greens aren't good, but like uh, this section has manganese blue genuine and yin min in it. And it's sort of hard to beat that. <laughs> we have spring mist from the lovely Laura. Uh, manganese blue hue. Manganese blue. Zirconium. That's probably a great idea. I should probably, instead of like putting in space filler pans, add those silicone packets <laughs> to absorb any humidity in my palettes. Most of the time, I'm just really careful to not put away things wet. And the thing is, because they're in these trays, like I can have them flat, I can have them open. And they were flat, they were open, but because it's been raining all day, like it didn't matter. They're really honey-based stuff. So not your stuff, but like the White Knight stuff. Specifically the White Knights from a tube. The White Knights from a pan is fine, but the White Knights from a tube is like melting. <laughs> and having a moment. So it's created a bit of a mess. That's good to know because I've got, in most of my palettes, I've got an empty pan spot. So sticking something in there wouldn't be a big deal. Misty morning and then glacier turquoise. Oh, I love misty morning. Is this a color you're gonna be restocking? It is one of my favorites. My favorite pale blue, probably. Other than like genuine manganese is fantastic, but Misty Morning is. Is it Misty? Yeah, it is. I think it's Misty Morning. Uh, it is absolutely fabulous. Uh, Glacier Turquoise. I've ranted about this paint so many times that we're not going to rant about it again here. Though I do rant about it in one of my upcoming videos again, because you know, it's an annoying color. Holbein uh, Breeze. And then we have various ceruleans. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think, 
I've got a, I've got a couple spare pans of stuff from you, but I think it's uh, uh, ultramarine and um, lilac that I've got in spare pans. I don't think Misty Mornings, one of the ones I've got in spares. Peacock. Comes after Peacock. Larkspur. Is this Larkspur? It is Larkspur. Galaxy Blue. Again, I've ranted about this color before. Not on live, but like... <laughs> if you've been around long enough, you've probably heard me rant about it. Uh, Royal Blue. Um, specifically in the Schmincke videos, I talk a lot about it. Uh, plum... nope. Blue-gray pastel. And lavender. What's next? Izzy, cool Safina. Oh, and now we're heading into cobalts, aren't we? Ah, I finally figured out what the beam something is in my beam palette. It's almost night. It's, it's you know, been called beam something for like f two years in my palette. But I finally this week spent some time on the beam site figuring out what color it actually is. Cobalt, cobalt, cobalt. Clearly, I am not afraid of using cobalts in my studio, though I have talked about like how I use them safely. Uh, mostly, I, you know, don't drink my paint water and clean my brushes regularly. Uh -huh. Roman small and then blue. Cause paints Viola. Ultramarine blue. Lilac marine. White Knights ultramarine. Daniel Smith French Ultramarine. I think this section is probably all in order. So we're going to say it is. Because I'm feeling lazy. And at some point, we're not at the stage yet where I'm pulling out pans. Though I've already pulled out the ones that are going to be pulled out. Um, I pulled out the supervision colors earlier. Cold deep. Lily. Yin Min. This part it gets a bit harder uh, to figure out what goes where because so many colors are gone that I don't actually really know what's what. But we'll see how this goes. Da Vinci Ultramarine is that. Windsor and Dude and Small DuPont. This pan is so perfectly flat that every time I look at it, I go, I didn't pour that, somebody else did, but no, it really is one of my pans. Cobalt mist. How much of a mess are you? You are not a huge mess. So you just get to go in. Tundra blue. I saw you. Where are you? Where are you? I now have a song stuck in my head, but if I sing it, YouTube will demonetize me. <laughs> and I would like the ad revenue from this video. <laughs> so I'm not gonna sing what's in my head. Galaxy Violet. It's a little pan, I think. You are that little sticky pan. You are not that little sticky pan. You are this pan. What's next? Van Gogh. Oh, I think you this or this. <laughs> Sometimes I go, I don't know. No, 
Look at this. Aha! Sometimes I go, I don't know my palette that well, and then I'm sitting here on live pulling colors and realizing that just from the top of pans, I'm identifying what colors which most of the time, and like, most people can't do that. <laughs> like, this, this is a weird talent that is so unneeded, but is also like, sort of helpful. <laughs> Roman Smalls Indian Throne. I want to say your nope, your paints, your Indian Throne. Like there is no reason that's Twilight, and this should be Galaxy Black. It is. I also love Cosmic's Twilight. If you haven't tried it, it's a great color. Misty Morning and Morning Mist. One's by Cosmic, one's by Roman Small. They look similar from up top. They are two very different pigment numbers and they swatch very differently. Cosmic Vertiberry. Gray Rose Mist. Uh, nope, I'm looking for Gray Pink Mist. So Shadow Gray. So you are shadow gray. You are shadow gray. Shadow gray. Haze blue. It is a very tiny pan. It's a part pan. It's not a full half pan. Oh, it's right here. Oh, and it's got a space filler for a reason. So the next color is a full pan. Because the next color is blue shadows, which is also not what made the mess everywhere. Oh yeah, it was cobalt mist that made the mess everywhere. You can see the top of it. It's all textured. Where are we? Indigo Genuine. I want to say you're an Indigo Genuine. You are. <laughs> oh, this is such a fun game. Shadow. Mm, no pure pains. Are you Shadow Violet? You are Shadow Violet. Core Indigo is this little, very sticky quarter pan. But it looks like it might just be sticky with its own paint. So I can live with that. Um, Sennelier Indigo is this. That has, you know, adhered itself to the tray with paint. Which sort of, you know, seem, seems about right for this Sennelier paint. Followed by Payne's Gray. Gray Pink Mist. Payne's Indigo. Rosa Gallery's Indigo. What is it? Daniel Smith Indigo. Ah, it's got a little hat. Oh, again. So sticky. Cosmic Indigo, and Narani. I did like her paints. I 
think she only lasted one shop update before she decided not to continue selling paints, which was sad. Where are we? We are on Imperial. Nope, we're here. This is ultramarine violet, and then cobalt violet hue, fantastic. Swift violet is here, followed by, ooh, I can't wait to try the new one from Prodigal Sons. From your swatch, I think it is very similar to this indigo from Wonderlust. I am very excited to try the new indigo. Cosmic Violet. I also need potentially another pan of that. <laughs> Clearly, it is a well-loved color. You can see just how much of it I've used. It was, it was totally full and slightly pillow topped. It is now not. It's quite a well liked pink. Sorry, purple. It is a purple. Lilac mist. I love this color. It is such a fun, bright, super granulating purple. We are deleting Supervision Purple Brown. Delete. Cosmic Sour Grapes. White Nights. Whatever it is after it. Well, just the Roman Smalls Mineral Violet. Cosmic Gray. Mineral Violet. I do love Mineral Violet. Peerless Cause Paints Dioxazine Violet. Have this row that comes next. We have different versions of dioxazine violet. Uh, Pansy and Regal. Ash Mist. I also love this color. Like, it's. You look at it and you go, where would I use it? And I use it all the time for like sunsets and stuff. Shipwrecked Beyond Indigo. Beyond Indigo Shipwrecked. Oh, in a video, I took an upcoming video. I know I keep referencing upcoming videos. I cannot edit as quickly as I film these days. I reference my issues with this color purely because when you wet it, so much orange sits on top. And then when you re wet it, it's really hard to get the purple underneath. The only pigment that likes to activate is the orange pigment. This is a pretty good example of what it looks like dry. I would look at this and go, oh, that's a great brown, when actually it's supposed to be a purple paint. And you can make it purple from the pan, but it is quite difficult. We are on Hisia, which is here. Followed by Deep Sea Violet. I want to show you this. You are this. Tundra Violet. Yeah. Th this, this is Tundra Violet. This very orange pan is a violet. Um, violet Mist which also has a whole bunch of blue caked onto it. Violet mist, and then... Space filler. Because our next paint is Shadow Violet and Light. And then Nibs Thunder. 
And then Daniel Smith's Shadow Violet, which somehow got to avoid being covered in stuff. Lighthouse Cove Hollow, Moon Glow. Moon Glow, Moon Glow, Moon Glow. That's urban something. Yeah. I don't use Moon Glow often enough. Moon Glow is right there. To know what it looks like from just the top of it. And it has green on it. So apparently it wasn't just a blue that got everywhere. One of the greens got stuff everywhere too. The gray I can never pronounce. Oh. Where do you actually belong? So I was silly and did not label you. Okay, for now, for now, Violet Mist is going to stay where it is, though that might not actually be where it lives. I need to find that out once this is over. I have it in the spreadsheet twice. <laughs> And so it might not live there. It might live a road down, but that's okay. Like I can, it's easier to move things up than it is to add in extra pans. So I'm gonna leave it and we're just gonna keep going. I bet you run into this again. Nope. Okay. So, Violet Shadows is going here. And then Black Grape. And Wisteria. Except you're covered in stuff. Going here, Wisteria, Pink Peony, Pink Peony, and then Rose Quartz. Nope, Lilac, and then Pink Peony. Lilac, pink peony, then these fun things. That I've just made a mess with again. Clover. Lotus. Intico. I'm so confused. Nothing was added to this tray. So I think I have screwed something up. 
Oh, okay. Where's the swatch book? Of course it is not. Beside the thing, did I label these swatches? I bet you I didn't. Just like that, the mystery is solved because I have yet to put the double swatches in for colors. And so I know exactly where Violet Mist goes. It comes out of here. Is it coming out of here? These two go up. Crisp is thunder. Violet mist goes here. Petal goes here. All right, I still haven't quite figured out how we took a pan out of this palette and have ended up with the same amount of space. Oh, because we haven't. Except maybe we have. What comes after petal? Amaranthus. Which I don't know if it will fit. Sure, here we go. Now we have a clean tray and that goes up there for a minute. That comes down. This moves down. Where are we at? Permanent mauve. Again, th this is what, like putting paints into tubes from or tubes into pans, like doesn't have to be neat. You just, like, it's cheaper, buy your paints and tubes. Or if it's cheaper in the country you live in, buy your paints and tubes. For me, it is significantly cheaper. And I mean, like, a Daniel Smith half pan costs starting at, like, $15. And that's the same as what uh, a 15 mil tube costs. So I would rather just get the 15 mil tube. I'll get way more use out of it. And if it's a color I hate, I can, you know, pass it along to somebody else or sell half pans of it. So we are on Bloom's Wisteria, I believe. Yes, Wisteria and Lilac Mist. Or Lavender Mist Supervision. Rubia Indigo gets deleted. Um, I've talked about it a couple times why I'm removing them from my palette. They're lovely paints, I just refuse to have a brand that reposts my content without permission and when they were asked to remove it didn't remove it from all the platforms just removed my content from the platform 
that I found my content on, um, it just felt gross. So I've pulled their colors from my palette for that reason. Cobalt Violet Deep, Tranquility, and Candy Tuft. So they're pretty colors. I just don't want to even have them in my palette because it just like made me feel gross that even when I asked them to remove my content, they only removed it from the one platform that I'd found it on. And it wasn't until I got partially monetized on YouTube that I realized that they'd reposted it on YouTube as well. Galaxy pink isn't what I want. I need tundra pink. Which I think is this upside down little pan it is. So. I think it's an important note for anyone that's creative though, like make sure, I know a lot of my friends use um, cut out, like not plexiglass, watermarks that they just have on their desks when they film. So it's really easy when somebody reposts their work to know whose work it actually is. If you can watermark your work, watermark your work. I am awful at doing it and I don't but I do on occasion pay the price for that. And in this case, like YouTube makes it easy to get content taken down, but there are other brands that do not make it easy for you to get your content removed. I have to label this pan because I had an incident where a whole bunch of paints fell off. I actually, I dumped an entire tray. I dumped this reds tray about 10 days ago off of a desk. And everything, luckily all the pans that all the paints that got separated from their pans, it was easy to figure out what belonged where. But this paint belonged in a quarter pan and I couldn't get it back into its quarter pan. So we got an upgrade into a half pan, just for my own sanity. Oh, the ones that I was deleting? Yeah. Now you know. Oh, Twilight has something that goes in between. Mama Jolie goes in between. And it's one of these, I want to say. Nope, it's this. These are too pink to be it. Hematite Mist, which you just have yourself on you, so. That's fine. Violet black goes somewhere. I don't know where violet black goes. Where does violet black go? Or where is violet black? Oh, there's violet black. And I think I need a space filler pan. Yeah, I do. Just so that nothing slides around. Oh, we're on to pinks. We have Putty from Beyond Indigo. Eternal Rose, Cocoa Rose. Orly, Wild Rose. Wild Rose is a new cosmic color. I don't think I've used it in a piece yet or a piece that I've posted yet. I've painted with it. I just, nothing that I've posted. Rose quartz, wood rose, peony, and ash rose. I think I'll, it'll get used for, for Mother's Day stuff. All right, have a safe drive. Thanks for hanging out on live. We never coordinate this well enough for you to hang out in the chat while I'm live. Papaya, potters, salmon, 
and coral. Quinacridone coral. Quin red. Oh no, Rosa Gallery's corals first. Oh, because it doesn't look. This palette is going to be a palette full of space fillers. It's like, I can't. Oh, no, I can. Um, Rhodonite Genuine. Carmine. Peony. Quinacridone Rose. Quinacridone Violet. Quinacridone Rose. Anthroquinone and Matter Lake Red. Uh, Inca. Cosmos. Uh, I have this as Mosa hibiscus. It is these, but there is something that goes in between, and I don't see mimosa. Maybe I've dropped it off my desk. I probably have with everything that I've been working on. It's probably just fallen off my desk somewhere. Bee magenta isn't bee magenta anymore. It's now called cherry. Not cherry haze, just cherry. Then we've got Sakura. The where mimosa is gone. I did use it a few days ago, but I thought I put it back. Rose, Ruby, and Quinn Magenta. Rose, Ruby, Quinn Magenta. Claret. Loganberry, Cranberry, and Berg Bro. Perline Violet. Galaxy Pink. Dragon fruit. Where's what I want? There it is. Oh, dusty rose. Soliloquy Potters. And Volcano Violet. We are now Watercolor Candies Potters. 
I was just an Isle Dusty Rose. And Daniel Smith Pine Night Night. Followed by Dutch Tulip. Lees. Paraline. Paraline. Rosa Gallery's Magenta Gray. Okay. I'm going to move these into here. So we can get rid of a tray. And I'm going to quickly look under a table. Because I know that this palette fell off a table, but I thought I had grabbed all of the colors. So confusing. No idea where it's gone. Peach haze. Cause yeah, I'm missing Hermosa. I'm not missing. I can't read. <laughs> oh. All the fun of a brain injury, honestly. Honestly, all the fun of a brain injury is explained with that cacao. <laughs> Dusty peach. Uh, no, that's mocha. Urban Red, I just saw, I think it is. You are. Cadmium Red Light, followed by Scarlet, followed by another Cadmium Red, and then Carrot, and then another Cadmium Red, and Volcano Orange. And then red coral. Yeah, red coral. I want to say you're all together, actually. Red coral, cherry, and Aquarius red. You are all together. Alpaca. I do love alpaca. Then we have strawberry. Cosmic Alizarian Crimson. Daniel Smith Permanent Alizarian Crimson. Windsor Noon Windsor Red Deep. Cadmium Red Hue. This time I do actually need a space filler because the next pan's a full pan. Cadmium Red Deep. Rose Matter, Volcano Red, Venice Purple. I always think Venice Purple should actually be purple and it's not, it's like a dark red. Warm Safina. Dunes. This is all in order. We have Martian Earth, 
followed by Mahogany Brown. Caput Mortem Violet by Windsor Newton. White Knight's Caput Mortem. Truffle, Chestnut, Ancient Vessel. Caput Mortem. Again, I went through a phase trying to like Caput Mortem. Uh, Scarlet Hematite. I want to say is you. It is you. Old Leather. Where's Volcano Brown? Are you Volcano Brown? You are Volcano Brown. Blooms and then Nibs. Mossy Glen. not cosmic, it's Roman small vine, chromium brown. Then we have sun and Bella the cozy. All right. Almost done. Buttercup Buff Titanium. Addison and Sedwig's Harpsichord. I want to say your Harpsichord. You are. Followed by Mustard, Marigold, and Ochre Light. We have Indian gold to finish off this tray, unless there's space to fit one more pan, but I don't think there is. We will still try and fit Buddha though. Sure. We'll make Gouda fit. If I wish it hard enough, Gouda fits. <laughs> Oh, welcome to life in my watercolor palette. Nib Cien. Naples Yellow. Artistic Isle Tuscan Sun. Butternut. Burgundy yellow ochre. Nope, that's not Quinn Gold Hue. This is Quinn Gold Hue. Daniel Smith Quinn Gold. Followed by Daniel Smith Quinn Gold Deep. Nope, Daniel Smith Quinn Gold. Sennelier. Wind gold. Roman small twin gold. Daniel Smith Quin Gold Deep. Michael Wilcox Yellow Ochre. Addison and Sedwick's Cooper. Genuine Quin Gold. Peach, Joan Brown at number one, Sparks of Dawn 2.0, Sparks of Dawn 2.0, Peach Pop, Salmon. 
Nazca. Oh, we're almost done. We are almost done. Yellow orange. I don't care about the spots on my trays as long as they're hard, but if they're like soft spots of binder, then they bug me. Uh, Daisy Lou. Cadmium Cutie Saturn Red. Cool, I just get to grab this entire and scooch it over. Flame red, Titan red. Papaya. I believe. Daniel Smith Quinn Burnt Orange. And then Rosa Gallery's Quinacridone Gold. You can see even here how orange it is in comparison to the other Quinn Golds, which look much darker but more goldeny yellow whereas this looks so orange try our transparent gold ochre michael wilcox raw sienna amoeba which isn't actually called amoeba but i always call it amoeba because i can't remember what it's actually called Quinacridone Maroon. I added this color to my palette and I don't know how I feel about it. I go back and forth on liking it and hating it. Milner. Are you gonna slide up or are you gonna sit there nicely? Let's put a tiny space filler up here. And then like you're just sort of stuck sitting there nicely. Dragon's Blood. Rust. Desert Orange. Burnt Sienna. Lunar Earth Goldenrod Ember. Royal Brown, super cool brown pigment. As single pigment Rosa Gallery's colors go, Royal Brown is one of the most interesting colors they have. Burnt Sienna and Maroon. Oh, I feel gross. Uh, gingerbread Ash Brown. My brain is tired. Um, my fingers don't want to work. Umber. Wood. Carry mocha and cypress raw umber. Desert brown, raw umber, okay, we're almost done, beach for nibs, urban brown, Urban gray. Castile Van Dyke. Sepia. Pearl gray.
all these lovely grays. Cobalt gray. Urban gray. Ash Moon, followed by Courtney's Gray, both from Cause Paints. Blue Granite, which has stuff on it, but it's paint from its own pan, so whatever. Daniel Smith Jane's Gray. Schmincke Glacier Black. Hematite Genuine. And clogs. Random Gray 2022. Ontario. Urban Gray. Little Bat. I love Little Bat. I think Laura just made a new batch of it, so it should be back restocked shortly. Wig, Dave's Gray. And then Aquarius Gray, I believe is the order. And then Pebble. Oh, we're almost done, which is good. I'm struggling to make my fingers pick up anymore. Um, they don't want to behave at this point. Um, Zinc and Skelligro. I love Skelligro until I tried the white from Windsor and Newton, the permanent white gouache. It was my favorite white that I had in my palette. The permanent white gouache wins now, but like it's a fabulous white. Michael Wilcox. That white is in a palette set. We've got permanent white. Vine. Neutral. Neutral tint. Raven Lunar. Lamp. There we go. The palette is totally put back together and ready for me to absolutely destroy it again at some point. But for the next couple weeks, it should stay relatively organized. I do tend to keep it pretty organized when I pull colors from it. But when I'm filming a whole bunch of videos back to back, I get lazy and I don't put things away like I should. And then we end up in a situation like this where I just like haven't put anything away for a couple days and then you sort of just have to take everything apart to put it back together. So there's the studio palette, all tidy, all put back together. I, and I've pulled the couple things I wanted to pull, which I forgot to do last time. So that's a positive. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed. It's mostly just a chat with Laura and I talking to each other, but um, it's always fun to see how other people organize their paints, I think. And yeah. Normal uploading schedule will be back this week. It was sort of back last week. It will be back totally this week. So look out for that. And thanks for watching.